Hey guys, so today I wanted to cover a recent interview from Randy Pitchford, which comes to us from the Nerdvana podcast, which is a show that Randy Pitchford does with other friends either in the gaming industry or workers at Gearbox Software. Randy Pitchford, if you guys don't know, is the CEO of Gearbox Software, and that is the company responsible for Borderlands 3. So in a recent episode of this podcast, posted on March 18th, he was asked by a fan around the 46 minute mark if he can say anything about Borderlands 3, and if there's any possibility of any Borderlands game being ported to the Nintendo Switch. And he ends up giving us so much more information than that. He compares Borderlands 3 to Borderlands 2, saying it's more complex and larger, gives us a potential time frame of what to expect from the reveal of Borderlands 3 to the release, and talks about how important Borderlands 3 is to their developer 2K, so let's break it all down. So the first topic he brings up is why the game hasn't been announced, which has already been answered prior to this, but let's just take a listen anyways. All right. Well, on the on the first thing, you know, there's a there's a there's a saying that they have in publishing. The suits tell me all the time, it doesn't exist until it's announced. And there, yeah. there has so so. Look, it's it's no secret we're working on more Borderlands stuff. We've got a whole lot of people working on uh, a lot of great things in the Borderlands franchise. Uh, we haven't announced any new titles yet for it, um, but. There's actually a lot of stuff going on, and uh, I'm, I really can't wait till that moment, but that moment isn't here yet. So he starts by saying, you know, it doesn't exist until it's announced. It's no secret we're working on more Borderlands, which all makes sense. And I do understand why they haven't announced it yet. They do want to control when the hype happens, especially for the mainstream market, considering most of the loyal Borderlands fans are anyways gonna be hyped, gonna be looking up news and updates and videos including this one you're watching right now. And even I do that. So it basically just confirms that they don't want the game to be announced until they're ready for the mainstream market and ready for it to blow up and get all the attention and news outlets covering it. And then again he also just quickly touches on that the game hasn't been officially announced yet. Then he starts to discuss the timetable fans should expect from the reveal or the announcement of the game and then to the release along with an analogy that he then compares it to. One, one thing we're learning about this industry uh, as, as it develops, as it progresses, and not just this industry but the world in general um, and particularly when it comes to entertainment and media, uh, the, things move very fast now. So we don't, mm -hmm. we, it, it's actually a negative uh, to to kind of build the hype too early and to make a promise too early. Uh, right now, right. we live in a world where once it's time to say, "Hey, here's a thing," you kind of want it then, right? Like, or <laughs> like, "Hey, this band that you love is making a new CD or new new uh, new tr new album." Uh, CD, like I'm such a dinosaur. Um, <laughs> uh, this band that you love is making a new album. Like, but it's not going to come out for a year. No, yeah. it's like you tell me like the band's got an album and I could download it today. Like there's less and less lead time between when we actually make the big um, open public reveal for something we've worked on uh, and when it actually launches. Uh, in the video game industry, there'll still be some lead time, but um, but it's not going to be like you know a year or two years like it, it has yeah. been in the past. I think when we announced the original Borderlands. From when we announced it to when we shipped the game was about two years. About yeah. two years. That's a long time in today's world. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not we're not going to do that with, with the future stuff that, that we've got in development. So I would say this is one of the most important parts of the video. And I think the community should know about this. That the wait from the announcement will not even be a year or two like in the past. Even in his band analogy, he says that waiting one year for an album is too long and that he wants it today, which should make fans happy. We've been waiting a long time for this game, but at least we can rest assured that when the game is finally announced, we will probably have to only wait a few months until we can play it and it will be released. He obviously still says that there will be a wait, which most likely means that they will announce at one of the big gaming conferences, then release later which will probably be a fall, September, or October release like all the other Borderlands games. 
And the places that they could announce could definitely be E3, which is only in a few months, PAX, or GamesCon. So we'll just have to wait and see. And then after that, another topic he quickly touches on is the state of the game at Reveal. The other, there's another very important reason why we shouldn't do that is because things in development are, it's like art, it's in motion. It's constantly changing and we're adapting to our own discoveries. And uh, it's, it's really important now more than ever that when we make a promise that we meet or exceed the expectations set by that promise. Uh, so we need to, I want to be at a point where we're basically done before we, before we even tell people what we have. So Randy says that basically they want to be done with the game completely, which does make sense considering how they have been burned in the past because of this. Borderlands 1 was shown before the cell shaded graphic style change, so the characters were shown using completely different models, and there was no fourth Vault Hunter originally. Even Borderlands 2 was shown at E3 before release, and they mentioned mechanics and weapons that didn't make it into the final game. So it is nice to hear that everything we see at the reveal will 99% probably make it into the game and be how we see and how we play the game. This also keeps people from feeling cheated by early gameplay, which has been really relevant, especially lately. And it means that Gearbox will have plenty of time to start the DLC for the game and come up with a consistent roadmap to follow. So it's really great to hear that they're taking this super serious and planning everything down to the detail. After that, Randy compares Borderlands 2 to Borderlands 3. I mean, you played Borderlands 2. You know how big of a game that was and how many people had to come together to make that happen. Uh, the things that we're doing moving forward are even more complex and even and even larger. Wow. So it, it's best for us to kind of get all our ducks in a row yeah. before, we, uh, before we make promises. I think it's... So Randy quickly touches on how many people it took to make Borderlands 2, including all the work and then to release it. And that moving forward, everything will be more complex and larger in terms of Borderlands 3, which is actually super awesome to hear as a fan. It basically confirms that we will be going to another planet because of all the complexities and how big the game will be. The planet that's been hinted at a ton is Promethea, so hopefully we can see new wildlife, scenery, weapons, all of which will be drastically different. And because of the newer consoles, Gearbox will be able to experiment more with weapons and we can see new styles and new effects that we haven't seen before. Also something else that's been hinted at a ton is the possibility of seeing space travel and maybe even traveling to different planets to open up then all the vaults that we saw at the end of Borderlands 2. After that he also talked about 2k and take 2. Borderlands is like a billion dollar business so it's really it's it's i mean not not for me for the suits like the the our pub our publishing company take two interactive yeah. and 2k like this is a really important business for them yeah. uh they're 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 not i mean when when something gets to that scope it's you, you can count on there being uh um, Good. they're being support for it yeah. and, and they're being backing uh, for it. So as soon as I heard this originally, all the talk of 2K and Take Two and how important the franchise is to them, all I could think about was the Take Two earnings report, which states that quote, Take Two continues to expect to deliver both record net bookings and record net cash provided by operating activities in excess of 2.5 billion and 700 million respectively during fiscal year 2019 led by the launches of rockstar games red dead redemption 2 and the highly anticipated new title from one of 2k's biggest franchises in the way randy talks about it they both seem to have similar talking points about the biggest franchise really important to 2k great relationship so when i read this or heard it it kind of confirmed to me that Borderlands is definitely that game. I know it's been highly speculated that it is anyways, but hearing Randy talk about it and hearing the similarities of how they discuss each other, it means that most likely Borderlands is this game and that more and more news and details should be coming relatively soon. And then finally, he talked about Borderlands 3 on the Nintendo Switch. 
we we've had interactions with Nintendo, and I do have some. We do have some titles coming, mostly on our publishing side. Um, but you know, it, it, it it's tricky. There, it, the the Switch is not the same. It doesn't have the same capabilities as the others. Mm. And so to do a game, I think I think a good Nintendo Switch game needs to really be cared for as a Nintendo Switch game. So obviously the possibility of Borderlands 3 on the Switch doesn't sound great after hearing him talk about it, but at least on the bright side, Gearbox has had conversations with Nintendo and the game hasn't even been announced yet. So I'd say it's too early to completely dismiss the idea of the game never making it to the Switch. Gearbox Publishings has been working to make sure the games they are publishing, like We Happy Few and Hello Neighbor, have either made it or working to make it available on the Switch, but don't get too optimistic either. So let me know what you guys think down below. Is all this recent news around Borderlands 3, does it mean that the game is coming soon? And let me also know all your thoughts on all these stories. Link will be in the description down below if you want to see the whole video for yourself and also link to the Take 2 earnings report if you want to read that for yourself. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at HaterHype for updates on future videos. Like, comment, subscribe, and see you guys in the next one.